Now let's take a look at the uh, use of angle of attack and the traffic pattern. So before we actually descend uh, on our way home, let's talk just a little bit about the angle of attack cues that we're going to use. All right. The two cues that we have available to us that we need to use in the traffic pattern are LRV Max, which we're going to use for most of our maneuvering. We're also going to use that as a surrogate for flap extension speed because I don't have an indicated airspeed available to me today. So uh, I know that elevity max at 1G at the weight I'm operating at is going to occur at about 90 miles an hour indicated or so. And my VFE is going to be 100 miles an hour indicated. So I know if I'm in an elevity max condition uh, that I actually uh, am below VFE. I'm also going to use elevity max for any closed traffic or any maneuvering in the traffic pattern. So it's my primary cue once I'm on downwind. I want to be in an elevity max condition until it's time to actually slow down, configure the airplane, and get ready to land. When I do that, you'll see that I slow to an on-speed condition, and on-speed becomes my primary reference for the base turn and final approach. Once I actually get down into ground effect, I'm going to start my landing transition, and I'm going to slow the airplane down to a slow cue because I have a tailwheel, and I want to do a full stall landing today. Water traffic RV, some broad run, short initial, option 1-8 right, ruckle. Once I'm over the numbers, idle power, easy left brake, and I watch my angle of attack increase. And once I hear an elevated max cue, I can start to deploy flaps. I can run my landing checks while I'm in the brake. Gas, full tank, undercarriage down and locked. Mixture standby for that. We'll get that a little bit later. Props NA, pressures, fuel pump, and cover your throat. Checks good. All right, there's an elevity max condition. Flaps 20. We'll just continue to decelerate. I have Armstrong flaps, so I got to be relatively slow to get flaps 40 in there. There are flaps 40, and off the perch on speed. You heard a momentary slow tone in there. Let's just go ahead and demonstrate what happens if we get slow in the turn. That kind of warning, actually right up on the stall right now, and I'm just going to ride the stall right around the edge of the turn. I can do that because I've got good SA for my angle of attack system. Let's go ahead and just increase our angle of attack now back to an on-speed condition. Now my mixture's rich, landing checks are complete. This will be a low approach. So notice I just maintain a uh, on-speed condition in here. Now truth in advertising, let's put a slip in here momentarily. Okay, we can only tolerate up to about plus or minus six degrees of side slip and still maintain our accuracy. Uh, and that's just a function of the shape of the tube itself. So I maintain an on-speed condition until I get into the transition and then I start to slow down. Let's go around, fly a closed pattern, take a look at that. There's flaps 20, power's coming up. Notice I'm on speed. And let's accelerate to an elevity max condition. We'll just maintain elevity max in the pull here. No slower than on speed, a little bit of a crosswind. And get set up for another traffic pattern. Gas, undercarriage, mixture, propellers, pumps, pressure, and carburetor throat, all good. And we'll slow down below all of any max because then we know we can uh, deploy flaps. There's our elevity max condition, flaps 20 and flaps 40. Now, it's important that the angle of attack system knows exactly where the flaps are. Some commercial systems don't have the ability to measure flap position, and that's a big shortcoming. So now you notice I'm actually in a slightly fast condition, and that's fine. Okay. Not that far off. So we'll maintain this slightly fast condition. Just now if I wanted to carry a little bit of extra energy, this is how I do it. So basically, for a normal landing as a pilot, I work somewhere between slightly fast and slightly slow. I don't need to be on speed. 
the time actually on short final. Because with a light plane, low inertia, we don't really need to be stable that much before we actually land the airplane. Let's go to an on-speed condition. There's an on-speed condition. And now we're actually set up to land. Let's go around. Look at that one more time. So, flaps are retracted. There's an on-speed condition. We'll accelerate just a little bit. Pull closed. Get set up for one more pattern. And again, notice I'm just flying in LVD max condition as I pull closed. This time I'm going to try to fly a perfect traffic pattern. Haven't done that in 40 some years, uh, but there's always hope. So there's an LVD max condition. I'm going to deploy flaps 20. I want to make sure I'm right at an on speed condition flaps 40 when I'm a beam the touchdown point. Higher odds of success that way. All right, there's a flaps 40 condition. Notice I'm just maintaining on speed, completely landing checks, gas, undercarriage, mixture, propellers, pumps, pressure, and covered and throat temperature. It's all good. So there's an on speed condition. I'm just going back to idle power. My airplane that happens to be full nose up trim. Now I'm going to maintain on speed all the way around the traffic pattern. We're going to see how well I can do today here. My mixture's still back, we're delaying that. And that's just to be kind to my carburetor. So, using this technique, it's pretty simple. I'm actually controlling the tone, or the angle of attack, with my stick. I'm controlling the glide path with my power, and then I'm controlling the ground track with my bank angle. That's uh, another reason that uh, those of us military folks like to fly one turn to final as opposed to flying two turns to final. You not only avoid the AOA spikes, the airspeed, and the configuration changes, but it's just a lot easier to do, especially when you have a crosswind. Okay, So I'm just maintaining an on-speed condition all the way down here into the hole. There's mixtures rich, our landing checks are complete, and still got slightly fast. So the elusive perfect traffic pattern remains elusive for Mike McCarroll. Come on down here on speed. Now my runway is fairly long, so I'm going to do something a little non-normal here. I'm actually going to add power, maintain on speed, and I'm going to delay my landing so I can shorten up my taxi and be kind to my landing gear. All right, pulling the power now. Notice as I get into the flare, I transition to the slow tone, and that's because I'm doing a three-point landing. And since I know exactly where the stall is, it's really easy for me to plant the tail on the ground fully under control. Now, because I was on speed and I was at the perfect energy for touchdown, you notice the airplane didn't bounce. That's because it can't bounce. That's the other glory of angle of attack over indicated airspeed is that uh, your energy is absolutely precise for touchdown. And that concludes our demonstration for today.